Hi friends, Auntie Cuckoo here. Welcome to my week-long series, Fall in July. You may have heard of Christmas in July, but this year I'm bringing you a week-long series of all things fall home decor related. So I have a lot of projects to knock out, and I thought what better time than when the kids are away and the temperatures are hot outside to bring you guys some inspiration for the fall season. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram for an extra chance to win the giveaways that'll happen at the end of the week. Now let's get right into the DIY I have for you guys for day number one. Today's DIY is a faux homemade pumpkin pie. You guys always love seeing my faux cupcakes and cakes I made when I first started making videos. And a pumpkin pie has been on the top of my to-do list since then. So today we're gonna make a homemade faux pumpkin pie for display. So something I had on hand from the Dollar Tree are these little frosting tips I bought years ago. I had a little spill of green food coloring while I was in there. I also purchased one of these smaller pie pans that the Dollar Tree sells. And to go with that, I picked up a nine inch foam square with my coupon at Michael's. It fits almost exactly in the pan. I'll show you later how you can forego the foam altogether. Next, you're gonna to wanna to break out your spackle Dollar Tree does sell small containers of it. I picked this one up for around $7 at Home Depot. Now on to a few more supplies you're gonna to wanna to have. Some hot glue and some paint. So these colors specifically will be listed in the description below. They worked out really good to make the pumpkin color. Also, you're gonna to wanna to use some black and white acrylic paint to just age and distress your pie pan. You're gonna to wanna to have at least one paintbrush on hand, along with some scissors, your hot glue gun, a pen or pencil. I also pulled out a plastic knife, some cardboard. This one started life as a cereal box and I used my little sanding block from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is age and distress your pie pan. I did this by mixing some black and white paint, blotting it very haphazardly along the sides of my pan and then using a plain old paper towel to blot it. It worked out really good and gave it that galvanized metal that looks like something you'd find in your grandma's cupboard. Next up, I wanted to dry fit my foam into my pie pan. As I said before, it's almost a perfect fit. So for that little extra touch, I took a kitchen knife and just trimmed a little bit around the edges and especially along the bottom. Now I'm gonna use my foam as a template for a circle on our cardboard. Go ahead and trace it and cut it out. Now, if you didn't wanna spend the extra couple dollars on the foam, this is where you could cut it out. You could just hot glue your cardboard into place and go ahead and get started. I'm hoping mine lasts for years to come. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the foam using a little hot glue in the bottom of my pan and pressing it down till it fits right in place. Once your hot glue has dried and your foam is in place, you could always just use some felt in orange or brown, cover it as your pie, and again, be done. But I definitely want a realistic look, so I'm going to forge on, and I've decided to hot glue some cardboard to the top of the foam for a smooth, realistic pumpkin pie look. Now, once your cardboard has dried in place, it's time to create some pumpkin. Now, I used a plastic knife and it didn't go on easily at first. I'd recommend maybe roughing up your paper just a little, but I didn't wanna put the spackle directly onto the foam because I've done it in the past and it creates the foam texture. So I wanted a smooth surface. With a little bit of patience and time on my hands, it all went on smoothly and the more gentle I was building up my layers, the better it started to look. So then I just set it to dry overnight once I was happy with the texture. I patted it down a little bit with my hand as well to smooth out a couple little wrinkles. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna use my sanding block from the Dollar Tree to just smooth out a few areas that are higher than the others, which really didn't do a whole lot if I'm being honest. Now it's time to paint. I mixed my orange and brown paint to create the perfect color of pumpkin, and I think it worked out pretty well. I ended up painting it in two coats, letting it dry thoroughly outside in the summer heat between. I'm really happy with how this color turned out. 
I think mixing the brown and orange gave it a very realistic pumpkin look. Now I'm hoping my pie lasts for years to come, so I did go ahead and decide to seal it with some Mod Podge. You can totally skip this step altogether or even give it a thin layer of Elmer's glue. And once my pie was completely dry, I was ready to add some whipped cream. For this, I used my spackle and it's already white so you won't have to paint it. I did use my tip from the Dollar Tree and a little sandwich bag which turned out to be really thin. I would suggest using something a little thicker or possibly double bagging your bags. I had a couple of blowouts. So you just add your tip to your sandwich bag and fill it with some spackle. Word to the wise, use a little bit. I used quite a lot and I had a little bit of trouble with that at first. Now once you've figured out how to get your spackle in your bag with your tip, go ahead and get a paper towel or something out that you can practice on. Especially if you're like me and you normally don't frost cakes. So I decided to go ahead and just make little circles, almost like little mountains, winding up to the center to make them look like little dollops of whipped cream. And I just went all around the edge of the pie. If you decide to forego the spackle for your pie and use the felt, I would recommend using the spackle as the whipped cream or frosting on top. I think it gives it just a really real look. Now for the center, I just did a larger circle of whipped cream right in the middle to finish it off. And that's all there is to our faux pumpkin pie. I am so happy with how this turned out and I'm so glad to take the time during a season when I'm not super busy to prepare for the fall and to make my dream decor. I've always wanted a faux pumpkin pie and now I have one. I sure hope you all enjoyed seeing how I created this faux pumpkin pie for my fall home decor. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to join me the rest of the week for more fall home decor ideas, DIYs, and inspiration. Also be sure to follow me over on Instagram for an extra chance to win the giveaways happening at the end of the week. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you back for more fall in July.